Hey guys, it's Christian with the Interactive Immersive HQ. I got a tutorial today where we're gonna go over two different effects for projection mapping. They both leverage the idea of extensibility. So we're creating visuals that can adapt and change based on whatever we're gonna end up projection mapping onto. So hopefully you guys enjoy and let's get into it. So when we're first getting into projection mapping and thinking about simple effects that we can pull off, uh, most often what's going to be the case is we're going to be projecting onto flat surfaces at weird angles. Um, you've probably seen around on some Pinterest boards or reels and things like that where uh, the really cool projection mapping is these faceted buildings where we've taken LiDAR scans of the entire um, building surface and we're popping it into Unreal Engine and, and kind of doing some really complicated effects on top of it. And it requires a whole lot of pre-production and a lot of steps that go into making visuals like that happen. But when we're doing something that's pretty simple, we're gonna be projecting onto just something that's flat, like this big wall over here that I actually projected onto for a small music uh, show that I did. And this is the Oceanside Museum of Art down in San Diego. And it took me multiple projectors to span across the entire uh, wall right over here because it's, it's fairly big actually and I was projecting over here off to the side and so had to end up stitching two different projectors together to get one large image onto it. What comes to my mind in terms of simple effects is playing with the grid that we can put onto a completely flat surface like this. So to kick off making our grid I'm going to put down a GLSL top and I'm gonna use the UV textures that we get for free with the GLSL and put there in line nine of the default, VUV.ST, and then put zero for the Z variable and one for the W. And we can see that we're getting red going from zero to one in the horizontal and green going zero to one in the vertical. And this is exactly what we, what we want, where we're going to map the red channel to our X position and uh, green to our Y position. Now we're going to set the resolution to, say, like 20 by 20. And this is going to be our aspect ratio or the, the amount of squares or shapes that we're going to have in our grid. I'm then going to connect this to a math. And we can use the range tab to set our red and green or our X and Y positions to however we want. And I'm going to plop down a rect sop and then plug that into a geo. Go into the instancy tab. Um, I'm going to drag this out into a null for good practice and then drag this into the translate op and go red and green. We don't need to worry about Z because we're going to go ahead and use a camera. And for ease, I'm going to change this to orthographic. And we can see that if we pull this into a render, our rectangles, the resolution, I'm going to set to 1280 by 1280. And this is because I want to create an extensible setup where where our projection mapping surface, whether it's going to be rectangular, square, um, you name it, I want to be able to create a grid that's going to span across the entire thing and make it so that it's more easily available for me to create my effect on. We also got to make sure our GLSL top is in the right pixel format. I'm going to go to 32 bit float because I need negative values. And I'm going to change the red because our orthographic camera is ortho width of two. That means that the camera is going to go two units. So I'm going to change this from zero to one to negative one to one. And because it's square, I don't have to worry about odd aspects. And so you can see now it's covering the entire screen. I'm going to bring this guy way down and we can see now we're getting our grid. I'm then going to plug in a constant material and pull that into the geometry. And then let's plop down a rectangle top. 
pull this into a null and then drag this into our constant. So now we're getting um, essentially just white squares and there's a little bit of an alpha. And if we wanna make sure that our alpha is true, we're gonna go to the common tab of the constant and click blending transparency on and discard pixels based on alpha is also on. So now that we have our grid set up, uh, I wanna go ahead and increase the rectangle over here to a size of one. That way it spans the entire top and we're getting the full rectangle uh, texture and it's showing that we have some spaces. Sometimes this can be an interesting effect to play with on a flat surface that we're projection mapping onto. It kind of resembles bricks or a unified structure in which things are, are evenly ar arranged. And what we can do and play with this is certain fall off effects that we can very easily get going uh, using a ramp where we can actually start in the middle and then bl balloon out in, with a nice fall off. And so I'm going to set down a ramp over here and we can do horizontal, we can do vertical, and we can, we can have all these different types of ramp gradients, but I'm going to go ahead and choose a circular and I want to make sure that the aspect ratio is the same as our GLSL so that our uh, instancing network is the the same width and height. Otherwise, we're going to run into some issues. And I want to make sure that the output is just setting the resolution only. Once our ramp is the same aspect ratio, I'm going to connect it to a math just like we have in the network above so I can remap it to whatever values I want and then finally connect that to a null. I'm going to then go ahead and go up to the geo and let's say we'll do scale for now and set R as our instancing number for the scale in the X, Y, and Z directions. And I wanna animate this as well. So I'm gonna use abs time dot seconds in the phase parameter. And as you can see, we're getting a cool fall off effect that's happening on our grid. And we can then put it on any sort of surface that we want and play with this and, and see what else other sorts of effects that we can get. So this is a pr relatively straightforward effect, but if I go ahead and use the, the same example that I referenced earlier, the Oceanside Museum of Art, I'll drag in the image and I'm gonna go into our pane and I'm gonna open Canton Mapper and I'm gonna go click open Canton window and I'm gonna drag our image into BG mask, press that. So now we're getting uh, the view where I can now projection map onto this, sort of in a pre-visualization manner. Click the square over here, drag in, just sort of approximate a square. And then I have these handles and very kind of crudely drag this guy over. And I have our effect over here, our grid, I put a background, kind of a little bit of a, a, a barely a black, it's not really gonna matter, but we get a, a sense of what, even though this is pretty simple, this is something that's interesting and in, in with this sort of scale of a huge wall or even a, a bedroom wall, it could be an interesting effect to play with. And it's, it's simple, but has infinite variations in terms of color, uh, we can tweak the fall off, we can ease it in a different way. So what really sells this as a good projection mapping effect to me is just how customizable we can get with it. And if we have a reference photo like this of whatever we're gonna end up projection mapping onto, um, the network itself can evolve to whatever surface that we end up doing. So if we look a little bit closely, the surface is rectangular, so it's longer in width than it is in height and it's stretching our square texture. So I can go ahead and say, mm, you know, I'm gonna change this to 1920 by 1280. And that sort of fixes the problem that we are encountering of, of sort of stretching the texture or, you know, uh, I, I, I wanna make the squares a little bit smaller. All I have to do is just go into this rectangle tab and then lower this down. And, you know, now that I've lowered the, the size of the rectangles, I can actually fit a lot more in here. So like, I'm gonna put this up to maybe 40 by 40. 
And now I've created a lot more squares in our in our grid. And so this can grow to whatever purpose we want to use it for essentially, even though it's probably one of the more simple touch designer effects that I can think of. But the fact that it isn't too many operators is really playing to our strengths as far as somebody who wants to go and projection map onto something like this. So in the same vein of, of creating a system that's able to be sort of modular and fit to whatever surface that we're going to end up doing, I'm going to ramp up a little bit of the difficulty here and, and go ahead and plop down an NVIDIA Flex Solver. And we're going to create a add SOP. Feed that into a convert SOP as well. We're going to be creating a particle system that is using the NVIDIA Solver. And we have the actor right here. And then to make this work, we have to plug in an instancing network. So I'm going to plop down a noise, switch monochrome off. And then just like how our top up here was controlling the grid and arrangement of our squares, we do the same thing here. And instead of that, I don't want to fry my system. I'm going to go with 100 by 100. So that's going to be 1,000. Um, particle or 10,000 my math no good sometimes anyways we're going to go into the instancing tab and pulling this in as well and we're going to do rgb and the performance has already fallen off a little bit but i put go into the add sop click add points and convert to particles per point under the uh, convert to, and then particle type as render as point sprites. And we're gonna get a flag that the collision shape is out of date, but that's okay, we're gonna initialize the sim. And you can see we already got kind of an explosion of particles going on right there. And if I look and I init it as well, it's gonna show that there's only particles in the positive X and Y, and that's because our pixel format isn't 32-bit float. So if I knit it again, we should get and fix that. So you can see that our particles are kind of exploding and they're just falling into nothingness because we have a gravitational acceleration over here. But if I go ahead and plop down a box SOP, and I go into our actor, or our NVIDIA Flex Solver, sorry, and I'm going to click Enable Boundaries and drag our box up in here. And I need to make this pretty big. So we're going to go ahead and make this like size 5. Init the sim and then start it. And you can see that our particles are falling to the bottom of, of our container over here. And just like we had above, I'm going to go and render this but only drag in our actor to be rendered. And we won't see anything. I'm going to do the same thing we did above, where it's 1280 by 1280. So we're going to have a square aspect ratio. And our camera above, if you remember, the ortho width is 2. So actually, we can reduce this, because I want to make it so that the particles are bound within the frame of our top. So this is going to drop down to a size two and we might have to plug in a constant material over here click material and there we go now we can see our particles are in view they're a little bit uh, i suspect if we make this maybe a little bit smaller now And actually, if I swap out this for a point sprite, drag this in as a material, there's a tab on the point sprite material that I can increase the scale of our particles over here. So now we have some little bouncy, happy particles. And just like the other system, which was I could kind of mold it however I want, this one works in a very similar way where I can maybe reduce the size of our Z direction. So now 
our particles are actually bound within the, the, the boundaries of the box. There we go. We have a little bit <clears throat> thinner of a box here. So it's, you know, size two, size two in the X and Y, and then one in the, the Z direction. So it's kind of squishes them a little bit. And if we go into this gravitational acceleration tab, I can kind of change this and we'll get different gravities that are kind of perturbating the, the particle system. And in fact, I can go ahead and just, let's zoom this in just a little bit more. There we go, because I want them to kind of not exactly hit that, but pretty dang close. In our noise, I actually want to make this an offset of zero, so it's going to be centered around the origin. So if I take the output of what we've created with the particle sim, we can see I, if I move things around, we're getting a sense that um, the the actual frame of our projection map surface is is constraining the particles, and it gets an interesting feel where the the walls or the frame of the top itself is is constraining is acting as a boundary to our particle system. We can even go ahead and make this dynamic by adding some noise, turning on time slice. You know, we'll do TXTY. So we have two different noise channels. I'm going to take the math of it and I'm going to combine channels, create the length. And then spin a math off the original one as well. Pull this one in here. And um, if you're familiar with linear algebra, I'm just normalizing the values here. And we're going to divide these. So we're getting a normalized input. And then I can do a math and multiply this by 9.8. So we're getting kind of an even um, accurate amount for uh, a real situation where gravity is kind of moving and 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 twisting it around, and this almost seems a little bit too too much to me. So let's do four point four. And so we have an interesting effect going on where it's like with not a whole lot, something that we can kind of mix and match and. Uh, modularize or extend however we want in terms of the, the boundary that it's containing. If we're feeling like it's stretching things a little bit too much, I can add a material like a, a circle or a texture onto the, the point sprites. Kind of add a little bit of softness to these guys. So now we have some circles, but there's some issues with alpha. So we'll do a blending transparency making sure that our alphas are correct. So now it, it seems like we have some, some particles that are kind of going on. Um, and this is something that you you have to sort of tweak and mix and match once you're on site, as you see the visual kind of happening in front of you. But I think that's what makes good projection mapped visuals and, and simple ones at that is things that um, depending on the surfaces, you're, you're sort of ready to go and, and change at will. And the beauty of Touch Designer is it's all real time. So you can make something that um, can grow with you and you can take with you and, and change it however you want to do it. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.